Hi, I'm Joanna O'Connell. Welcome to The Road to Cannes, a Beat TV series presented by Freewheel. I'm here with Mike Law, the CEO of Cara North America, where he oversees the agency's strategic growth in the region. It is always a pleasure for me to get to sit down with Mike. So Mike, thank you so much for being here. Thanks for having me. Good to see you. Um, I'm going to go right for the tough ones. Okay, launch in. <laughs> That's right. So you are running an agency, so you clearly have a fairly broad purview these days. What do you feel like the general mood is in the ad market, just given the continued mixed economic signals? Yeah, uh, I think I, I would start with optimism. Yeah. I think there's still this incredible um, feeling that we can do great things in this space. Uh, that That's marketing, yeah, yeah, that marketing and media coming together. It's an amazing time in our industry. Uh, disruption is happening around us, but for the better, we're creating better user experiences. We're, we're getting content in front of the right people at the right time. Uh, and marketers have the ability to, to break through. Uh, I'd be remiss not to say that there's some economic headwinds that we all face. And I think uh, it's an opportunity for us to challenge ourselves to think differently and know that we have to drive change. But there's a lot of things that are making that easier for us to do. So I'd like, I'm an optimistic person, so I'll say that there's, uh, the, the, the current is optimism that we will find new ways and uh, that we'll break through this. Do you feel like the current for your clients is optimism or you're bringing an, a, a kind of a sense of optimism to the conversations you're having with I them? I think there's a bit of realism yeah. mixed in with it, right? We're all facing the same realities of the marketplace, the broader economic mm -hmm. marketplace. We're all very aware of those impacts. Um, but I do think that clients are saying, help me understand how to win in this space. I think previously uh, there was a lot of, the, it was looked at that marketing was expendable. Yep. Let's get rid of our marketing budget. Yep. Now it's how do we use marketing to win? How do we use media to, to break through? So we're seeing it as an opportunity versus kind of, all right, we'll come back when everything gets, gets better. I, I really do want that to be true because that feels like the right answer, clearly. Yeah, the old cliche would be, right, like media and marketing is an expense, right. right? I don't think so. I think it's an investment and I think it's a way to drive growth. Me too. Do you feel like they're graduating past some of the traditional notions of what they entrench to, what's familiar, put all the money into direct response and are kind of more comfortable continuing to commit to brand? Yeah. Do you see them innovating in, you know, as more than a checkbox exercise? Yeah, I think if we start to uh, make a list of good things that came out of the pandemic, mm -hmm. I think this is one of them that you can't sacrifice brand. You mm -hmm. can't sacrifice the work that you've done to have consumers love your brand. There's mm -hmm. a huge importance to that, uh, but you can match that much closer now to performance. I think the intersection of brand and demand and commerce are so much closer, so much more measurable. We learned this from a lot of the DTC advertisers that it's not about a legacy measurement of CPM. It's really about a measurement of did I drive growth? Did I invest in the right places? But all of that is on the foundation of brand and brand love and brand equity. Yay. <laughs> that's yeah. encouraging. For people who love brands. I, I know. Yeah, it matters. It's, it's, it's a it's a long term ongoing investment. Yes. And I know that, you know, there's lots of debate. And the cost about, to earn that back is very high. Very high. No, you're you're totally right because consumers continue to evolve around us. Somebody right? will be there waiting for your spot that's if you a, bow out. That's a, the, more more true than ever. Yes. Um so let's now narrow in on what is often the biggest line item, which is television. Yep. In the advertising spend piece of the equation at least. Um we're in the upfront season now, for better or worse. It's come yep. back round again. It's here. Um, so, <laughs> you know, what what are you sort of anticipating coming out of the upfronts this year? Yeah. Are things going to move more slowly than we'd like, or are things going to be more um, look look really different from from next year? I think the first thing is let's define. You said let's talk about television. Sure. Yep. So television, it's 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 all video. Yeah. Like that's how we're going to look at. It. I think we are past the days of, is it digital video? Is it mobile video? Is it CTV? Is it OTT? Is it, T what is it? I think we have to look at it as one screen. Our, our line has been, let's, let's buy TV mm -hmm. like you watch TV. Ooh. So think about how That's you good. go home and consume at night. And it's like, oh wait, I actually didn't turn on right. the ch same old channel selection that I used to. Um, I think the marketplace has continued to evolve past 
this one month window. Mm -hmm. These are really important weeks in terms of grounding ourselves, understanding product development, uh, and, th and there will be an economic transaction that happens between now and at some point in the, in the summer, maybe, if the timing is right. But it's really about these frameworks and long-term partnerships. We're creating uh, you know, a roadmap for the next 12 to 18 months with these conversations. Mm -hmm. And yes, there's a transactional piece of it that's really important, but it's not the, I don't think it's the headliner of the upfronts anymore. Does that feel like how your clients feel? Like, do you feel they're pushing you guys to evolve or do you feel like you're pushing them, them to evolve? I'd like to say we're pushing each other. Okay, that's I good. I think that's that, good. Um, you know, it's our job to push our clients. It's really important that we go in. We understand the marketplace. We understand the landscape. They understand their products and their product lines and their goals and what they need to do. And I think mutually we have to say, how are we gonna, gonna get there? This isn't a marketplace to sit back and wait. It's not even a landscape to sit back and wait and see what happens out there. I think we've got permission to go do things different. We have to differentiate ourselves. Mm -hmm. um, so I'd like to say we're maybe pushing 1% harder than our clients are pushing us, yep. but I think it's a good mutual push. And I think the platforms and partners are pushing us as well, saying, right. look, we've got something new and different. It's yes. not the same old op operation. Um, so I, I think this is an industry that's kind of all pushing ourselves to be to be better. So, uh, you know, on what dimensions would you say there's sort of the advanced audiences conversation graduating beyond age and demo, yep. which we still talk about. We do. And uh, there's the currencies conversation. Yeah. You know, there are, there are some there are some big things at play. Like, where yeah. where do you feel the energy? Uh, well, certainly this time of year and for the last year or so, a lot of focus around measurement, yeah. a lot of focus around currencies. Right. Uh, I think it's really important to point out those are two very different conversations. Yes. I think, yeah, thank you. <laughs> I'm going to point at you okay. and point out that I okay. agree. <laughs> totally agree. Uh, I think it's really important because I think, you know, measuring is about saying how many people were there. I need you to, to give me an accurate count and I want that to be consistent to know how many people showed up and whether that's how old somebody is, what their tendencies are, any of those things. I think currency is about what's the business outcome that you're trying to, to drive. And I would have said the opposite, really. You think of currency as business outcome and measurement as did it deliver? I think measurement is about counting the people That's that so showed up. And I think that okay. currency is cost per whatever. And I, you know, we can learn this from the digital space. You know, it's always been cost per acquisition. It wasn't just cost per thousand people that showed up yeah, totally. it was a cost per outcome a cost per acquisition a cost per download yeah. like so cost per what are you trying to do is basically i think what we're trying to get to from a currency standpoint so i'd like to see lots of evolution in that well it's so interesting is it's still you know the fact that we still need to parse out what we're talking about when we're having these conversations yeah. is something that needs continued attention well because the the legacy was that measurement equals currency. Right. We will be the currency. In is TV. What, in TV. Measurement yes. equals what did it do in digital, right? So that's, exactly. that's part of the challenge. Exactly. Yeah, interesting. Okay, totally fair. Um, how do you feel like we're doing uh, in terms of breaking down silos when it comes to the sort of TV is TV? I know yeah. you, you talked about that, but like what are you guys actually doing to make that real? Yeah. Organizationally or, you know, technology-wise? Well, how we've built our teams. Yeah. Uh, how we go to market, uh, it is, it's, it's one budget. Mm -hmm. it's, it's understanding who the end consumer is. Uh, we have to push ourselves to be different in that. I think some of it even comes in through the measurement and the currency saying, let's measure it all together. How do we be mm. consistent with that? Mm -hmm. It's about finding the next best viewer. I think this is one place where, you know, the conversation on reach is really important because where can we reach the next consumer? And it mm -hmm. doesn't only have to be on the big screen TV. It doesn't only have to be through, you know, an ad delivered through your cable box. Uh, it can be delivered in any which way. So a lot of things to dissect in that. That would be another long <laughs> interview. Yeah. Uh, but I think, you know, we have to show up that way mm -hmm. is most important. There is a lot of legacy baggage okay. around this. And I get it. It's emotional. We all love TV. We love how we grew up with it. But um, there's a there's a new way to do it, and again, I'll just go back to to the line of buy, don't forget what you did at home. Like I say to media planners, like when you walk through the door of the office, don't immediately go to your tool and say, well, the tool told me this. Mm -hmm. That's looking backwards. Like what did you, what did you experience in and around? What did you see? What did your friends doing? Like yeah, 
do it like you're, you're living this world, not the machine told me I should do this. Buy how we watch? Is that what you mean? Uh, buy TV like you watch TV. Right yeah. on. I love that. Yeah. Okay. So we are doing a series here on the road to Cannes. So yeah. let's talk about Cannes for a second. Yeah, Very to. excited. Me too. Um, you know, what particularly are you kind of keen to hear about, discuss, explore while you're there? Yeah. Uh, what I love about Cannes, I mean, first off, it's a great opportunity to spend time with clients and partners, and everybody's very focused uh, on kind of agendas and driving things forward. Not preset agendas, but mm -hmm. how can we make each other better? Uh, I love that the, the festival's built around creativity, mm -hmm. so you have to spend the time to absorb that. And I think you, all of us, especially on the media side, have to force ourselves to go do that and be inspired by mm -hmm. that work. And, spend some time like looking at this, the amazingly talented people in that, that space. Don't get sucked into our bubble of medias over here and creatives over there. Because yes. more than ever, media and creative need to work together. Consumers expect that from us and that will allow brands to break through. I think I'm pretty sure we're gonna hear the letters A and I. I'm sorry, what? <laughs> quite yeah. a lot uh, over there. And we've heard this a lot over the past 12 months. It's an amazing moment for this industry and it's needed not just because it will make things happen faster, uh, I think it's gonna unleash a new amount of creativity in the media side of the business. Mm -hmm. It will allow our teams and our staff to not be focused on kind of the operational, transactional part of the business, but how do we get our teams to be able to do things more creatively, think uh, through the lens of a consumer. So uh, I know there's always a lot of fear of, well, AI means you're gonna need less people, and it's, no, it's just gonna change the makeup and actually, I mean, the young talent that's coming into this industry are so brilliant. And why are we going to bury them in a spreadsheet? Like, let them come do this amazing work that they, that they want to do. Um, so I love the promise of, of AI, and I think it will create better work experiences. It will create better user experiences. Um, yeah, I mean, Cara, just for one little plug, I mean, we talk about designing for people, mm. and this is going to allow us to do that better than, than ever before. If only we had like six more hours to talk about all of that. <laughs> we probably do have six more hours, but not on camera. So. <laughs> no, we'll do it in can. Love it. Um, Love thank it. you, Mike, so much. Great to see you. Yeah, you too.